It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hello everybody, this is Tyler Preston 20. I'm here with a Spanish YouTuber. His name is Un Tio Blanco Hederel, or translated into English as a straight white dude. Yeah, actually my name, well, it has a lot of history, but I kind of copied from, like, you probably know him, like, some straight, like, some straight, like, some black guy. I was following him, and I felt like his name was really funny, and I thought, like, dude, I can call myself, like, some straight white dude, and I would be, like, in the pinnacle of the privilege. In addition, he has, like, a reference with uh, identity politics, uh, tried to refuse my own identity by calling myself something like that. And even that has a connection with not so in my face, too. I've got a curious, what brought you into the world of YouTube politics? I think it's a mix of a lot of things. Like, I've been, like, researching a lot during the last years and being really interested for everything that was happening in America uh, without the fever, with the politically correct thing, and the social justice warriors and all that stuff. And I realized that that thing was like slowly coming to Spain. I think like what is happening culturally in America was kind of like trespassing frontiers and it was arriving to Europe. I was really worried because in America you have like a strong community of people who actually criticize these movements. Like... As I told you, like some black guy could be like one of them, so one head, Sargon of Akkad, or a lot of people that I even, I'm not agree with them all the time, but at least they exist and they're in there and they are like raising their voices to say what they think or to criticize something. And I think having that part in your culture is really important. And we didn't have anything like that in Spain. Like we have like some channels, but they really come like from the far right most of the time. So it was like, we need to bring these critics to this culture and we need to bring like a rational critic about this from a point of view who is, who tries, because I'm not objective, but who tries at least to be objective and who tries to give facts more than emotions. Or I, love, I don't like this because this is horrible. And I don't like this woman because it's a feminazi. And I don't like this person because she is like... A bit or something like that so that's what i really was trying to do with the channel and i am really hoping the people who lives uh, the people who listens to me i really hoping to create like a community in spanish speakers people who actually criticize culture in their more rational way do you know any other spanish youtubers or any youtubers from latin america who do this kind of stuff You're like we have alonso de emet in Spain, uh, Agustin Laje, who criticized like cultural Marxism, that I I don't even agree totally with that term, but he uh, he criticized like cultural Marxism. There is not that many people. Does the Spanish Constitution guarantee free speech, like the United no. States? They might say something, but it's not like the first. We don't have a First Amendment. The thing is, like we have some legislations that, for example, the left are trying to push. And we have some legislation that are taking already a lot of people to jail that are instantiated by the right. That, for example, like, enaltecimiento del terrorismo. I don't know. It's like talking about terrorism in a good way or something like that. In Twitter, like, it has put to jail in the last year, like, hip hop singers that, come, that came from the far left. And they have put them into jail. One guy was like joking about the um, uh, violence against women by men and he was put into jail too for writing that on twitter and they are pushing legislation to not only be about terrorism but being too about victims of the frankish dictator thing mm -hmm. and they're bringing to like if you mock LGTB community uh, you could have like fines and financial problems like and they can they can censor that on twitter and I think it's, it's crazy. And I think it's crazy because we're looking at what are being the consequences of that in the... Like, there were a lot of people who were on Twitter and who were tweeting about... Uh, I don't know if you know who is Carrero Blanco, but Carrero Blanco was, like, someone really important during the uh, Franco dictatorship. And he died in an attentado, in a, in a bomb attack by uh, ETA terrorist group and this happened like 30 40 years ago so it, it kind of it's part of the culture and the fact that 
a lot of people is making fun of that in internet now. Like they're making fun in a way, like making jokes in a way like, oh, you know what Armstrong found in the moon? Like the cut of Carrero Blanco, ha ha ha. Like kind of like, a, they're like dark jokes, but the fact that these jokes uh, are being prosecuted by law, like it's really sad for me that for example, uh, a TV show like South Park be done in Spain in any way, in any way or form. Like, uh, and I think it could not be done in many, many, many Europe countries. Dude, I think like most Western democratic, country, democratic countries should have something like the First Amendment. I think it's fundamental. Uh, more recently, just uh, last week, I heard that uh, Madrid had a lot of protesters. And I believe what happened was that um, a guy, I think it was a street vendor, he was running away from the police. And then basically he died, I believe, from a heart attack from the autopsy. And then, like, I think a lot of black immigrants started to destroy cars and set buildings on fire. Can you go into more detail about that? That normally, like, a lot of people has asked me to make a video about that. Um, there is a reason I haven't done it. And it's like, I haven't figured out in my mind yet like i like i have a position in there but i i normally don't want to talk about things that i don't think my position is like really um like if it's like uh, really clear or something yeah if it's really clear, like i'm really sure i'm not really sure i'm really open to discussion about this but for me it was like it's sad that every time something like that happened a lot of people try to use it in order to substantiate their political ideas like for example like two weeks ago or well no i don't know if it was two weeks ago but the, a small kid died and he was killed by like this uh dominican republic woman but what happened in that story actually was like a uh, little kid wh when disappeared they start suspecting about the stepmother who who was like the girlfriend of the father of the kid and they start to investigating her um i thought i think like they kind of bait her with something i don't remember i i haven't really quite through but what happened is like she went to the place where she has the body like hidden and then she took the body and put it in, in the trunk of his car and then is when they caught her and they caught her with the body in the truck in the trunk of the car so what happened after that like she admits having killed the little children. And I think she's saying like, she, she, she did it in like self-defense because the kid was like attacking her with an ax or something like that. Like something that doesn't have every, like no sense at all. Because I mean, like the kid is eight years old. What are you talking about? What, what are you <laughs> like he, he an ax. And then you had to strangle him and like, yeah, it, it's crazy. I and mean, it, it's a horrible story. It's a, it's a horrible story. And, and then, the worst part, like, and I understand a lot to the people who hate this woman with all their soul. Like, how are you not gonna hate her? Because after that, she was like in the in the trying like in the groups trying to find the kid, and she was like with the father, and she was like almost like crying to the camera, asking to the kid to come back and all that stuff. So it was like all this cynical behavior that happened after that made that case even more hateful for everyone who was looking at that. And when they caught her, it got like a really, really strong reaction, reaction from, from everyone. So what happened is like the two sides in the political specter, like they tried to use this in order to move forward like their political ideas. Like for example, once where they say like, it's like, Okay, look at this immigrant woman. She's like killing children. Like, woman do this. This is what woman do. And there was like these other people who was trying to use these people who was saying these things in order to tell us how racist and how anti-immigrants and how we hate women are all Spaniards. And it was it is this fight of ideas, and it's so sad that they use these things that are actually tragedies in order to move forward their political agendas. And what happened with this, uh, with this immigrant, I think it was, I, I think his name was Mbappe, but I think what happened, it's kind of the same because it was a tragedy what happened in there. Like the guy has like, he had a, like a heart attack 
I don't know until what point the police what was involved in the cause of this heart attack. But after that, it's true that it was a lot of uh, violence in the streets. And it's true, like there are some videos where the police are seen like using like stream forward. Like there was one video who was like beating down that one guy who was like next to a post light. That, and I hate when this happened because there are these videos that are totally out of context that you only see like 20 seconds or something horrible happening. And from there, like the like people made their own ideas of what they believe that they happen. And then they start like, like putting on fire all social networks and everyone is talking and everyone has like this idea and these ideas are like the most perfect ideas ever. And you have to listen to them because they're right and you're wrong. And yeah, I hate when these kind of things happen. I think like we need to cool down with these kind of situations and we need to try to make like the most objective read that we can about that. Like, okay, not, not every cop in Spain is horrible and not everything that cops do in Spain is amazing. Like we have to have uh, like a good understanding of what is happening here, what, what it means like having riots in the streets, what it means that it's having like people screaming, what it means like it's believing that someone is killing like immigrants, like police is like killing immigrants, like prosecuting them, like white people reacting that way and how we can approach it in a way that is gonna make the less damage, damage possible, the less damage. Yeah, let's say damage. Damage. Damage possible. Okay. What's the situation for men's rights in Spain? I remember yeah. reading that um, basically what happens if a woman in Spain falsely accuse a man of, I guess, you know, mm -hmm. rape without any sort of evidence that they get sent to jail. What's the situation for that? What happened in Spain is we have a, a law called Ley de Violencia de Género, Ley Integral de Violencia de Género, that they're going to make a resolution now again. So they're going to make like an add-on to that law now, who is even, even worse. But what is happening with that law is basically uh, it treats like violence against women. Like if it's in a way it puts women like a political group that needs to be protected by men. So what happens is like uh, same crimes made by a man and made by a woman have a different input into the law. This means like you're going to spend more time in jail if you do like this uh, certain crime, if you're a man, if you're a woman, if it's about like hurting your partner, for example. And about the fake, uh, how you call it? Fake? Yeah, when someone acu fake accusation that you told me, like it, there is a, li a lot of people talking in Spain about like, this is fake accusation. There's a lot of fake accusation and a lot of guys are going to jail because they only, not going to jail, but they're, well, yeah, they're going to jail because I think like you go to the jail for at least one day or two days. It depends. If it's on the weekend, you stay the whole weekend on jail. What is happening there is like many times they only take the word of the woman to prosecute in this way to the men. Like, and what is happening too is like, they say, that there is only a 0.007%, what is absolutely nothing. They say like there is only a 0.007% of fake accusations. But they got this number from the fake accusations that are investigated. But what is really happening is from all the accusations that there are, only 20% uh, end up with a condemn end up with an actual so the other 80 percent they're tied that like they they got into their tie they're like finished without any more research like there is 80 percent of these accusations that we don't really know what is happening if the guy is guilty but they don't have enough enough proof to condemn him or if the guy is innocent and has been falsely accused we don't know what is happening with the rest of the 80 percent and they i think that they post purposefully pur purpose purposely purposefully yeah <laughs> i know it's hard to pronounce think they purposefully don't go into those numbers and don't go into the numbers and actually the fact that i'm telling you this right now like a lot of people is going to catalog me as like i don't know 
like cuñado that this kind of an insult because i'm talking about this because only 0.007 percent so actually there is no fake accusation so actually this never happened it's kind of like okay you know be real like from the hundreds of thousands of accusations that are in spain like every year are you telling me that last year was zero like zero <laughs> fake accusation that's what they say actually i listened to a feminist the other day is like saying like there was like zero last year like oh so there are zero condemned so there are zero fake accusation and it's like no no it's not exactly like that it's like there is an 80 percent of condemns that actually end in nothing so they from the 80 percent went in nothing like it might be a part there might there might be a part which actually they don't have proof enough to condemn the guy but there might be a part where the girl like wanted to get like some kind of like beneficials in a process when they're kind of like breaking up like a, a, a couple or something like that and when it comes into play like the custody of children like yeah okay 80 percent how many of these are like actually it, it, it's something tricky you know it's something tricky and talking about this in the media for example is for biden like you cannot talk about this or if you talk about this you can do it in this specific uh media places that is for the far right but i you don't see this normally in um in an argument uh in a, in a normal channel in a mainstream channel or in a mainstream media or it, it, it's more difficult and no one uh, uh put a lot of attention i believe like there is a lot a lot a lot of money i haven't get into it yet but there is a lot of money in helps from europe and help from the state to these aggregations of people who are like dealing with these things it's kind of interesting because like i guess thanks to youtube people can now have these conversations and you yeah. know discuss things instead of having to rely on traditional media i think it's amazing and one of the things i started my channel in youtube is to try to promote more people to start doing this like it's important that like i think that i've said this before but i believe for example with feminism that right now it's really crazy in spain so it's really it's really cool that that's happening you know say it's really cool for them like they're like having like a lot of voices and a lot of people who are saying they're feminists now but the bad thing is like they don't have enough critics they don't have enough people pointing at the movement and saying like look at that look at that look at that look at that this is crazy this is fasty this is a totalitarian thing to say how can you say that and being like saying like you're trying to move equality forward like so i believe that the more people appears who do this kind of critics from online and the uh, 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 the biggest community of critic people who raise uh it's gonna be a good thing and i think it's a necessary thing and i think like due to for that is like a revolutionary tool what's your thoughts about people claiming that uh, spain is machista country it probably is in a way i mean like what you mean by machista country that's the thing like because they have a pathological way of looking at masculinity like from the feminist point of view they have a pathological way to look at masculinity for one thing is saying like there is no machismo in España. Like one thing is saying like there is no machismo there. And another different thing is saying that we have like systemic machismo. Like because we are a patriarchal country, like e every Western country is, like we are like super patriarchal, heteropatriarchal, and there is like systemic discrimination against women, for example. So I can believe and I subscribe that there is machismo in Spain. Yes, there are. Is this machismo systemic or is this machismo like something that uh, is spread into every structure in Spain? Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think that is the case. And I don't only think so. It's like, how the, how the hell we can have a machismo, like a systemic machismo in Spain and having the laws that I just talked to you about? Like how we we can have like laws that discriminate men for being men and at the same at the same time having like a systemic machismo like who in the hell in charge of that systemic machismo is in there because he is doing a horrible job <laughs> as the lead of the systemic machismo the, the patriarchal the patriarchal crew who is like leading with everything who is like controlling the war 
they're doing like the most horrible job I ever seen from an oppressive tyrannic. I, I was like very close to making a video and I, I made to it. So about like kind of in a cynical way, like being like the patriarchal leader and talking to all my minions and say like, what the hell is ha happening guys? Like really <laughs> we're doing a horrible job. as like, Oppressing everyone, we're doing a horrible <laughs> job at oppressing everyone. What is happening here? Since you're Spanish and you speak Spanish, um, mm -hmm. what's your thoughts about the whole entire idea of Latin X? Basically, there are Hispanics in America who is trying to make like uh, something between Latino and Latina. They say Latin X. What's your thoughts? Oh, because they think like Latino is too phallocentric. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, Okay, this thing, like, I don't know if you listened the other day, like, the president of Canada saying that he, uh, like, a girl asking about something and, and she say, like, the word mankind, uh, Justin Trudeau, that is the first minister in Canada, like, correct her and say to her, like, People kind? We say mankind. We say people kind. Yeah. Because that's more inclusive. Yeah, the people who say, like, they're idiots. They're idiots. Really. I don't, I don't. I don't have like a better word for them, for someone who wants to change grammatics because grammatics are not inclusive enough. Like that we happened the other day in Spain, like a, a woman in this, in this party, like Podemos, she said like portavoces y portavozas, who is like, dude, portavoz is a gender neutral word. Like you don't need to make it feminine. Like what are you doing? And when you say like Latino community and they're like, no, we want a Latinx for being more inclusive. No, you're not being more inclusive. What you're doing is like kicking the dictionary, kicking like the, the way we use words, I think is really, really, really important. And the fact that we don't get crazy at using words, like the, the fact that there is an order in the way we communicate, it's important. So I don't have any problem with people saying Latinx. But the fact that they want to put that forward to make it official and the only way to say Latino and try to kind of censor everyone who use Latino, who has the proper way to say it and, is, and that is un absolutely uh, inclusive, that not only talk about men, but it talks about, it's a group's like everything. Like if we're starting to doing that, I think it's a path to, to do dark places and uh, it's crazy it's crazy and like for example when you tell me that he, 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 i don't know it's really sad that we are in that point of our lives where where that are the important things for us to change that that actually doesn't have anything 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 to do with anything who could be useful or to anything like who, who are you going to discriminate with that word who's not going to feel included. Like, are you telling me that during the last 20 years, little girls were like feeling not included because you say Latino? <laughs> like, hey, Latino like, oh my God, man, what is he saying? Saying Latino is like, shut up. <laughs> no one is feeling like that. No one is like, no one feels like that. No one, uh, but, but they're trying to push that forward. They're trying to push that forward. Like that's really important. And the language, the language that we use really matters. And he's like, yeah, really? Are you going to get rid of that feminism thing? Because, you know, are you using like, it's not super inclusive, let me tell you. But he's like, no, no, this is fun. No, because, you know, like the structures of power, they work in this way. So it's totally cool for us, like making a stupid fucking name. Uh, sorry for the fucking names. But it's totally cool for us making a stupid names. But it's not cool at all that, you know, uh, we... It is not cool that we keep the the words that we don't want to word because they end in, in an O, for example, and O has like masculine connotations. Like no, 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 no. It's kind of funny because um, when you refer to police and like the word for police is like policia, that word is specifically gender, even though it's not you know just you know referring to just females. So I'm kind of curious, like where's the outrage over that word or words like that? There is not. Um, it's really like in one of the videos I made, it was about like this Decalogue of Feminism School. And there was a point in the Decalogue where they say like, okay, um, we have to get rid of every word that is like collective and it is kind of like masculine. And we're going to use like 
rather feminine or ended with an E? Like, I, <laughs> he was like, are you kidding me? So you're saying that you're only gonna use like your collective, like you're gonna change the world. You're gonna destroy actually the words in order to put them uh, an E at the end, like niñe. Oh, with policía sería policía. Something like, don't have any sense. Like, no one is engaging with that at all. And you're telling me that you're going to change all the vocabulary to teach in that way. And you're going to eliminate the this masculine. Like, is that how much you hate the masculine, dude? Like, you're going to eliminate, like, you're going to instantiate it into the rules of the school that you cannot say that word. It's crazy. I, 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 and you were totally right. La policía, it's it's feminine and it, it collects everyone. And there was no one ever who complains about that. Like, it would be so stupid. Like, I cannot even picture it in my mind. Like a police guy going to someone and say like, hey, uh, you know, I don't see this clear, this policía thing. I don't see, because, you know, it seems pretty feminine to me. <laughs> It's crazy, but yeah, it seems that that's that's the path like we're going to. But no, they're not going to complain about that word. That that's the thing. Ah, and I realized something too. Like I realized that they don't really care. Like they don't. They like to find some things that they can complain about. If they, I think, like if they cannot complain about, they're not interested. Like I, I talk about that in one of the videos with Marvel, for example. Like they were asking like for more diversity in culture and they wanted this and they wanted that. And Marvel did like everything possible to make them happy. Like, okay, Iron Man is going to be like a young black woman and this Latino lesbian superhero that we have. And no one is buying the comics. And it's like, I believe that if they don't have anything that they can complain. They're not totally like, they're like, yeah, yeah I don't know. I, I cannot complain about this. Give me back Captain America so I can tell to him how kind of a fast this key is. <laughs> have fun with that. Oh my. <laughs> uh, Star yeah. Wars, like, I think like they're satisfied with their th things like Star Wars. When they take like a saga and become then in a miserable thing, like Star Wars The Last Jedi, I think they're happy then. Like, oh yeah, yeah, that's cool. Like the movie sucks. We did it. Thanks again for coming on. I really appreciate it. If you guys uh, want to check out his channel, it's called Un Tío Blanco Federal, or a straight, a straight white dude. Sorry. A straight white dude. Yeah. <laughs> Un Tío Blanco Hetero. If you want to check it, you, you may learn some Spanish in there. I speak really, really fast, I think. Mm -hmm.